All right, now I played many daily chess games. Um, I guess not that much, only 30 of them. But of, of all 30 of the games I played on the daily one day per move games, this game by far is my favorite. By far my favorite of them all. And I think the the value that you can learn from this, this particular game is how to actually play in a closed position. So how to play a closed position, how to lock up the board where you can give yourself keen safety while still able to attack. Because if you lock up the board too much, um, you may run to cases where the game may end to a draw. All right, so in this case, Nero, I'm playing um, a, a, a fairly strong player. And I find that when I'm playing players around this rating level, it's not that easy to win against them. A lot of these games are a battle to not draw. All right, so he starts off with E4. In, in my opinion, E4 is the best opening move you can start off with. I know D4 is very popular at the higher level. And I think that people who are not strong international or grandmasters who play D4, I have a very easy time beating those players because I think you really have to know what you're doing if you play D4. So uh, E4, to be honest with you, will give me much harder of a time than D4. D4, I have no trouble beating. Um, but E4, I can admit, does give me a little challenge sometime. All right, so I start out with D6. Um, as far as the opening I'm playing, I think I'm playing the black line. Uh, I don't remember. We'll see. All right, so he does another strong move. Play D4 now. So he's really taking control of the center. I do C6. All right, so in this case, now I'm starting up with the E Shaw. So I'm playing the E Shaw um, opening, or is what I'm, I think, I believe is what I'm trying to do. I'm not sure if I was able to achieve the E Shaw system. And then he plays um, his knight out. I follow up putting my knight out. And he, he developed his other knight. So he's playing really good. He's literally have very good control of the center, right? So right now he has control of this square, this square, this square, this square, this square, this square. So he literally got full control of the center. All right, and then I do your typical move D shot where you start with your H6. All right, he got his, he, he moved his bishop here. Now, once he moved his bishop to this particular square, he's over protecting this pawn, right? Because this pawn is protected by the knight, the bishop, as well as the queen. Now, in the Isha opening, uh, typically this bis this pawn is what's normally what's the main target when you play the Esau system. You normally target a d6 um, d4 um, pawn when you're playing black. And now I play my g g g5. So g5 is um, pretty much the only pawn that reaches the fifth rank when you're playing the Esau system. And then, bing, he really indicated exactly what that. So I remember I was telling you earlier, I, I've lost my train of thought, is when he moved that bishop to um to e3, I already knew most likely he's he's trying to he's trying to castle the queen side. So he's already trying to castle the queen side. Um and I, I pretty much annoyed him for the time being, because I'm not quite sure how how dedicated he is for that that, that castle. So I didn't want to put too much energy in trying to stop that. And then he, he literally show his hand that he's going to cast the screen size all right so i see a target i say okay well this is typically when you see some people play this thing um it's a good move to actually try now to target this bishop because if you target his bishop he has no way to escape um when you try to target with your knight so that's what i do i move my knight into it so it looks like i'm not sure he noticed why he didn't really do anything about this because right now my knight is you know moving in for the kill most players, when they see my move my knight here, they see them probably going to try to trade off his bishop, and they will normally respond by moving the f um, the h pawn. But to be honest with you, that doesn't stop me because all I do from here is I just rest my pawn, so I attack the knight, and then now from here, mostly player would normally try to attack that, um, take that pawn back. I take here. The good thing about taking it like this is that this pawn is protected by three of my pieces it's attacked three times so it's well defended for the time being and I'm going to take off this um, bishop anyway now 
the only strange thing about this is that right now we I could I could take the bishop, but then he has this crazy move that I never seen nobody play this against me. Cause I don't get this position that 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 frequently is that he can do this crazy move where he actually move his bishop out of the way by going like here. And if he would do something like this, obviously I can't take the bishop because if I do that, I'd be trading my rook out. And I don't think that's really a fair compensation um, for that particular piece. So it literally tells me that, you know what, maybe in the future, before I go ahead and, you know, thrust this pawn, maybe I should have developed this bishop in first uh, before I, I went ahead and, and actually did that, so this way, um, if he this way he couldn't do that crazy move. All right, but anyway, I was just I was so much in a rush to grab the bishops pair. I love my bishops, so I, I I didn't really think too much about it. But in the future, I probably will probably do a little preparation before I go um, go too fast like that. All right, so he this castle. Not I'm not sure realizing the threat, and bang, I I I literally threatened to take the bishop and he tried to open up my 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 rook rook side all right so i had to do with this thing before i deal with it i first grabbed the bishop pair so now i have two pairs of bishop which is super strong he lost the bishop pair so if this would go to an end game it would not be too great for him all right so he takes with the the queen now to be honest with you most player i seen normally take with the pawn um but he tells me that by him taking it with his queen instead of with the um with the pawn he's letting me know that he wants to keep his pawns intact so it indicated to me that this guy is probably pretty good with the end game meaning that he's actually thinking about the end game he's not like some of the other players who just just keep on making crazy pawn moves without really thinking about how this is going to affect them in the end game. So he actually is considering um, the consequences of making that pawn move. Now, to be honest with you, to take it with a pawn, in my opinion, is not that bad because you got more pawns in the center. But if he were to take it with, um, if he were to take it with the pawn, my main objective in that case scenario is to find a way to get rid of this pawn. So this this way he's stuck with double isolated um, pawns in the center. Um, I'll try to find a way to find some kind of crazy tactic where I can eliminate this pawn right here, limit it in such a way where he doesn't take back with the pawn, but he takes back with the, the knight or something like that. Um, either, I'll just try to find a way. Either I might just thrust this pawn up here like this, but I probably have to prepare that first because if he takes, um, he can grab my queen. But I'll, I'll be looking for ways to force him to isolate that pawn. That will be my main objective if we do something like that. So this way, um, if I can isolate these pawns in the center, it will be kind of useless. See, he wouldn't be able to do anything with that, especially if I have a pawn in the very front of it. So therefore, it's not moving nowhere. All right, so like I said, he actually took with the queen. And then now from here, I have to make a decision. Should I take the pawn? and let him have an open foul for his rook or should i keep things close now obviously i'm going to keep things close i'm not going to open it up typically the only time i open it up is if he wasn't castle um yet then maybe i probably would have opened up a little bit but he's already castle his keen is safe so he's trying to open up my position where my keen is not safe so i, I try to close it up i attack his knight he moves back um, which is an interesting way of moving back. Uh, most people would have tried to attack this pawn with the knight. But he moved back over here. And I reinforced the pawn. So I reinforced it. So he didn't attack it right away. But if he would attack it right away, um, I would have tried to reinforce it anyway. Alright. And then he thrust the pawn. So he's literally trying to open me up. Now most people... Whenever they see the pawn move two spaces and they can do El Pacent, they always take it. They just take it automatically. In fact, most people at this rating level always take El Pacent. They just, they just, they just always do it. Um, in this case scenario, I'm trying to keep the position close for the time being. Because uh, right now he's castle, I'm not. So I'm not trying to open up the game. 
So I'm definitely not going to take out percent. So I just I just let it that way. So I think we don't both people take out percent is because L percent is a special move where you can only take advantage of that move right then at that moment. If a, a, if you let one move go by, then um you can no longer take out percent. You only could take it on that one particular turn. But most players always do the L percent. All right. Anyway, I decide to keep it closed. I develop my bishop. I would ideally like to move my bishop over here. So that's where I really want to put it. But I didn't want to choreograph the fact that I'm looking for him to make a mistake where if he were to get this knight out of the way and then he were to keep on thrusting his pawn, then I'll, I'll be able to, to pin down his um his queen to the, to, to the king. So I didn't want to choreograph my move. I see that I could have made that bishop move, but I want him to think that I'm targeting... A different pawn versus what I'm really want to. I really want to grab this queen, but I don't want to. I want to telegraph that move right away. All right, so he's trying to open me up, and I close it up. <laughs> All right, now from here, he has a couple interesting moves. What I thought he was going to do from here is that that most players, they, you know, once they have their mind set up of trying to open you up, they go ahead, and this is the, by far the most common move I see. It was a thrust upon to literally like rip you open, and from here, you I could take the pawn, but I think what I would do in this case in there is I'll just move my my knight, and then let him take it from here, and then I take like this. I think that's what I would have done in that case scenario. I don't think I'll be too crazy about taking the pawn like this. Um, yes, he can take here. I guess it's not that bad either. Because then up from here, I can uh, try to find a way to trap him. Um, yeah, I can probably find a way to, to trap him. It don't look like it's that bad yet. Oh, what was the move? How come this is so bad for him? Oh, yeah. So I can trap him like this. So now I'm looking closely. Yeah, so I can actually trap him. So he can't escape out the traditional route. He can now he'll have to try to come out like here. But then I can, um, no, he has no way to get out. He'll be trapped. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, so I guess maybe that would be the better route to take the, the this like here. So I see now why he didn't do that move. Yeah, so I see why he didn't actually do the, because most players by far, every time I play some, every time they get opportunity, they'll keep on thrusting. All right, so and if he would thrust here, he basically would have given me a pawn for free. So he couldn't take back because if he take back, then his queen is actually trapped, and there's is yeah he'll basically have to give away his queen, um for for two pieces. Yeah, and that, that wouldn't really be good um good for him. Yeah, so that that's all right. So okay, now I see. I didn't really understand at that point why he didn't do it, but now that I look at it closely, that was actually why he didn't do that. All right, but anyway, I didn't even give him a chance to even think about doing that. And my next move. I move my knight here, so therefore I'm overly protecting this square. So my knight is overly protecting that square, so he can't make that pawn thrust. All right, and he developed his bishop. And from here, I make a little strange move here. The strange move I make is I advance my pawn one space. Now, remember I told you, I'm looking to close up the game. Now, the best way to close it up is to go straight out of the way, right away, and just thrust my pawn to F, F7, I mean F, F, F5. F But the main reason why they make this move is because, like I told you, a lot of players at this level, they always take El Pasen. Always, always, every single time. I don't, I, I don't know why. Did this, did this do it? Did this do it every single time? So I didn't want to give him the option to even do El Pasen, so I just moved it one space. So I'm kind of breaking my rule where I'm actually losing a tempo. However, if I can close a position up, then it doesn't matter how many tempo my opponent has because he can't take advantage of his actual tempo. So I'm actually wasting the tempo by making this move. So I advance it 
one space versus just moving it twice. So he has the opportunity to take the pawn like this. And if you take this way, it's actually not bad move for me. I can just just take it back by here, and it's actually I'm um, pretty I'd be pretty fine with that because now in this case scenario, this queen has to babysit this pawn, um, and it's yeah, it's it's not. Yeah, I was not too upset with this. I, to me, I would be totally fine in this particular scenario. Um, now he can't even do anything with this open foul because his bishop is protecting my weak square here and my queen. So it's not really much he can do there. All right, so that was the only sacrifice of doing that route is he can take the pawn and open up the foul. All right, but he didn't take advantage of that. He's actually just moved the rook here. And this was a bad move in my opinion. What he should have done is I think he should have just moved the other rook on the center foul. So therefore, he has he, he has his rook on the center foul on um, both the F, I mean, on both the E foul as well as the D foul. Right, you have pressure on both foul. Now, I know the D foul is pretty much closed right now, but what happened is with the D foul, um, with his rook on the D foul, he can prevent me from doing any kind of crazy tactics that uh, I make. I could probably do maybe a sacrifice or um, or maybe if he would have if he would have take this pawn now, um, he would at least have an, uh, a, a rook here to protect this this pawn right here. So I think that would be a better move is to actually move the other rook to the center because this this rook that he has in, on the on the H file is not doing anything. It's is 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 basically looking at shit. It's looking at his own pawn. It won't better do anything. It's probably better to actually move it there. Maybe he decided to move this pawn here because he thought he was gonna open up the F foul. So maybe he wanted to move this rook over here. So maybe that was the reason why. But I uh, he yeah he really made it an accuracy move, um in his case Nero. All right, and I take advantage of that and I close up the center. <laughs> All right, that's my main goal. I wanted to close it up from the get go, and I close it up. All right, and now he tried to get his knight into the game. And I could let his knight occupy this square. But I didn't want to give his knight any spots. So I want to move my pawn up so I can really close the game up. But I just didn't want to give him any any hope of moving his knight in. Because if he get his knight in here, right? So let's say he would have get his knight here. So let's say I would have moved this pawn up here. And then he get his knight into the game. Then I move here to kick him out. Um, he can actually occupy this square. And now he's forcing my queen to babysit this particular square. Um, I didn't want to be babysitting that square. Just try to worry about his fork. Because I can't really take... I could try to take the, 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 the knight. But I don't want to trade my knight. I mean, trade my bishop for a knight. He would have take back um, with his, his bishop and so forth. Uh, maybe I can block it off, but then if I put this up, then he will actually come move his knight back into that square. And it would be a very good outpost for his knight. So I didn't want to give his knight his knight a, a, a nice home to sit on on my camp of the board. So I limited any of that. So before I move the move that I want to do, I make sure he can't he can't do anything. I, I don't want him in my camp. I don't want to give him any counterplay or anything like that. Just, you know, fuck him. <laughs> You, you're not going to come into my side. Simple as that. All right, so he moves the knight back. I don't even know why he did that. Oh, yeah, now I remember. He's looking to... So a lot of these times... So a lot of times when you're playing these higher players, they're going to be looking for pawn breaks. So they're always going to look at pawn breaks. You have to keep in mind your pawn break. And when you close up the position, you have to make sure when you close it up, you don't close it up all the way you still leave a few areas where you have pawn breaks because if you close the position all the way then the game can easily be a draw so and i, I had that happen to me a lot of time where the, the, i i closed up the board on one side and then i wasn't paying attention and i just kept on closing up the board and then my opponent play into my hand and and, and help close up the board even further and when you're playing sometimes with you lower rate players they are very happy with a draw. I don't like to draw. In fact, I prefer losing over draws. So I I I, I just don't like draws at all. So I'm I'm not gonna draw this game. I'm 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 playing for the win. 
but I'm I I want to make sure I have keen safety first. Right now my keen is a center. I'm fine with my keen as center, but hey, you know what? If I can lock up a side of the board, um, let me move my keen to the side wherever it's locked up. So right, so right now I'm trying to lock up the um the the keen side. Sometimes I lock up the center, and then I keep my keen in the center. But in this case, there I, I it looked like I can lock up the keen side. So hey, you know what? Let me move. Let me lock up the king side, and then I can occupy my my king can reside there. All right. Now in this case scenario, I can always move this pawn up at any time. There's no rush. It's not like he can thrust his pawn now because he'll just lose a pawn for nothing. And I'm trying to gain more square. So I'm basically threatening to kick this knight off um away. So I'm letting him know that hey, you know what? I know what you want to do, but you know, you're not the only one that can thrust this pawn. I can thrust my pawn as well. All right, so he thrusts his pawn, trying to show me where he's made out of. And I make a move that's supposed to be an accuracy, but I think is the best move. Now, computer recommend that I actually take this pawn, but I don't like that. I, I don't like that at all because if I, if I were to take it, then he has this bishop in this square. And even if I had to move this pawn up, I, I just feel like I would have to babysit this pawn over here. I, I just I didn't realize that too crazy, but it don't look too bad now when I look at it. But I, I didn't I didn't like the way this look. All right, so what I did here is I moved my pawn up, and then he took. Oh no, he then he moved before he took. He moved his king out of the way because he he noticed he's gonna open it. He's gonna create an open file for his. Um, his rook is going to have the c file open up, so he wants to um, move his king out of the way, so his rook can occupy that square. And I move my knight up here, so I'm just kind of maneuvering it around. Uh, he moves his rook into the open file. I move my knight here to actually um, maneuver it, and then he finally takes. And when I take, I didn't take with a pawn. I actually took with my knight. So I'm kind of baiting them. I'm kind of provoking them to, because right now this knight is a good outpost. Um, because this knight can't challenge it. The only knight that can challenge it is this knight, right? Remember, because these two knights are diagonally from each other, where there's a, a space in the middle, it would take this knight four moves to move around the board to actually challenge this knight. All right, but this knight can do it in one move. So I, I basically did that to provoke them. And not only did it provoke him, but I'm also attacking his queen. So I attack his queen. His queen had to move out of the way. So I move his queen out of the way. And then I, I develop my, my bishop. And then now he challenges it. And I could try to trade with him, but you know what? I don't want to make a trade yet. So I move out of the way. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure from here, he's got a little bit frustrated. It's like he really want to open me up. And he... He first moved the other rook to the center. So remember, he should have made that rook move a long time ago, but he now decided to make this move. And I find the castle. So I castle on the side where the board is completely locked up. And this guy's playing for a win. And usually these guys always make these crazy moves. And he makes a crazy move. Now, this is considered exit a move from him, right? Computer recommend this move. And that is to actually give me a pawn for free. Once he gave me this pawn for free, I was pretty happy with this. I, I love free pawns because <laughs> I, I, I am not going to um, make this free gift go unpunished. And I actually take with the knight. So I, I say, hey, you know what? I take with the knight because I want to make sure this pawn is protected. And I give him the opportunity to trade knights. Remember, he wanted to do that earlier. So, hey. Let's go trade a knight. We finally get to trade knights. All right, so he tried to get his knight into the game. And I see that. I'm not going to let him occupy that square too long. All right, now I move my knights, my my rook, to this particular square because I'm I'm trying to overly protect this pawn. Right now, this is my weak uh, pawn. And then he moved the knight in, and he basically forced me to actually trade because I do not want to let his, his knight into this square right here because it'll, it'll be... It, to penetrate my position would would not be too good for me in the long run. So I, I was forced to make this trade. This is considered an accuracy by the computer. They recommend a different move, but I, you know, maybe I could have took my time to take them. 
but I decided to take it right away. I just didn't want to play any games with him. All right, so I, I did that. And I moved my rook out of the way while still protecting this pawn. And from here, he made a pretty bad move. Um, I was kind of nervous around here because everything was going according to plan. Except for I had this extremely weak pawn here. I was overly protecting this pawn. But um, I didn't look too deep into the calculation earlier where he had a series of moves where he can literally get this pawn right here. So he made this move right here, which is pretty bad. What he should have done is, and I predicted this. In fact, I thought he was going to make this move right here. I literally thought he was going to make this move. And he would basically force me to protect this pawn again. Because right now it's being attacked by this queen and this rook. So I would have to actually protect it with this rook. And then he would really infiltrate my position. By moving his rook over here. And they're like, ah, oh, crap, fuck. And I still need to keep an eye on this pawn. Then I have to move over here. And then now he gets his other rook into the game by attacking my queen. And I'm, I'm really fucked from here. <laughs> so he moves his other rook in the game. And then I, I need to still keep an eye on that pawn. Still need to keep an eye on this pawn right here. So I move over here. And then finally, he actually have three attackers attacking this pawn so right now he will have one two three pieces attacking that and i only protecting it one two times um i could try to protect it one more time with this rook but if i do that then i'll let this pawn fall and i re if i let this pawn fall my whole position is going to crumble so I, I i need to keep that protected so i'll probably have to move my um my queen in here, my king here to protect this pawn. Um, but yeah, it would have been very bad. Right, you can see right here, he's up four pawns right here, because that, that's how bad this would have been. And I did not predict it this far. Um, I did see he, what he could have done, but it's not until that, um, and not until I got to this position where I was really nervous. Like, oh, around here is when I see that. I saw that. I saw the series of movies that he could have made. And I was like, you know what? <sighs> I fucked up. <laughs> I already messed up. But he didn't play the best move. So because he didn't play the best move, I took advantage of that. Um, I first protected, this, um, protected that pawn that I was worried about. Remember, this pawn was something I had to worry about earlier. And then he still didn't play the best move. He should have infiltrated. And then from here, I played a move that computer said it was a blunder. They told me I should have played my, um, my um, my bishop here first. I am gonna play that move, but I I didn't I didn't feel like I had to rush it. But I see what they had in mind, where I could have did that. The reason why I didn't make that move is that I could have did this right here, and I saw that he could infiltrate. And then I will have to protect this piece here. And I was really nervous about this right here. Which is stupid. Now that I look at this, you know, the bishop is hung. is a loose piece. He can't really make that yet. He will have to prepare that move by moving the bishop, the, the queen over here. And then he can do that. Uh, but in that case, there, I, will, I can actually protect uh, the pawn one more time here. Oh, no, not there at first. I would actually... That's a blunder. I could actually block the, the foul first. Just block the foul. Okay. All right, so he didn't play the best move, and I didn't play the best move. So even though, like, so I told you this is my favorite game. Now, when I analyze the computer, I see how horribly I played, and I can see how badly he played as well. But remember, we're, we're not computers. So us chess players are not computers. We'll never be computers. Um, so we think like humans, not computers. But we should always strive to make minor improvements whenever we can, right? So um, I see why they recommended that move, and I, I should have made that move. But I, I was thinking I would. I'm gonna make that move. I just my move order was a little bit different. All right. So I played this move, which is considered a blunder. But uh, I wanted to protect this pawn. So this for when he infiltrated, I don't have to actually rush to protect this pawn. I can make other moves in the time being. 
all right so I move here and that's another th good thing about moving this bishop to this square is I'll be protecting this square his infiltration point because right now he's trying to infiltrate his rook into my position and if my bishop can occupy this square right here then I can stop him from occupying that square all right I did have that in mind but the way I was going to do that was a little bit weird um, it will allow him counterplay. All right, so I move my rook here, and I, right now he has a bishop lined up here where he want to get discovery. He wants to move his his rook to this square, but then I'll just snatch him up, and that rook wouldn't be in the way. All right, so that's what I did. So he does a silly move here, and now from here I actually cover the square, his infiltration square. All right, so now let's talk about what my game plan is from here, right? So my game plan from this point on is I am looking to control all his entry points for his rooks. So I'm trying to make sure his rook cannot infiltrate any of this square in my home camp. So I'm trying to control these squares. Once I control these squares, then after I do that, then my main objective from there is I want to trade out all the pieces. So I want to trade out, not all of them, I just want to trade off his rooks. His rook, his queen, and I'll be very happy. I'm always, I'm always looking to trade out queens. I'm always looking to trade out the queens. But if I can trade out all of these pieces out, the only thing that will be left on the board is only going to be the bishops now in both case scenario we both have good bishops because his bishops are in the opposite color of his pawns and my bishop is also in the opposite color of my pawns however the downfall of something like this is that if my bishop is able to get here i can literally grab all these pawns for free he can't do anything about it his bishop can only look back on the sideline as I gobble up all his pawns. Um, however, um, he cannot do the same thing to me. He can't really target my pawn here because my king is already protecting his pawn. And not only that, the pawn that I have over here, he can't infiltrate here because I'm protecting his inchy square for that bishop to go into that square. So. It, he ideally he would probably like to okay if he can't get this pawn over here, then he should you know try to go after this one. But my king is protecting that entry square where that bishop can go into. So that's usually that's the best way to play closed positions. So you, when you play in a closed position, you want to hold off on your pawn breaks. You don't want to use up all your pawn breaks. You don't want to lock up position all the way. And then once you um the position is locked up and you still have some reserve pawn break then you want to control any fouls so he did a good job by controlling the fouls so since I couldn't control the fouls directly myself I first make sure I control his entry squares into my foul and then once I achieve the objective of blocking of, of of stopping any entry squares in my in my camp my next objective is I'm going to close up this foul so I'm going to close up the foul. Once I close up the foul, then I'm actually going to trade out all the pieces. I'm going to trade out not all the pieces. I just want to trade out the queens, especially the queen, and then the rooks. Once I trade out those pieces, then I can just go have it. I can just, just have a big old ball party and just gob up all his pawns, and then he can't do shit about it. So that, that's my main thing. And my opponent at this point probably think the game is a draw. He really thinks the game is draw. He he doesn't really have a plan in mind because the plan that he had was to just control the foul. And he thought he controlled it, but literally, okay, well, you, you have the open foul, but you can't do shit with it. You can't do shit with the open foul because I'm controlling your entry square. And as long as I'm controlling your entry square, you, you can't really do much with it, right? So I'm pretty sure, you know, he probably thought it was just a draw. But it wasn't a draw because I had a game plan. I, I do not play for draw. I always play for the win. All right. So now he made this move right here. He moved the, the queen here. 
So he's really wants to take advantage of the discover attack. And I finally just moved the rook out of the way. I don't want to give him any chance to do any kind of discover attack because it's like, you know what? No, it's not going to happen. And he makes this move right here, which is a questionable move. So he moved the um, the pawn up here. And I was wondering what he was going to do here. So I figured maybe he was going to try to rip up the position even more. But to me, that'd be kind of stupid because he's literally opened up the position where his keen is at. And that's how I basically play the position is earlier, notice when I reserve my pawn break, the pawn break I reserve was on the keen side, wherever his keen was at. And I didn't even have to use my pawn break. He just... He he used up his pawn break by giving me a free pawn, which was pretty bad. And he is going to notice how badly that was by giving me a free pawn. All right, now I do this little move right here. So I, I move my bishop up, just one square. Um, I want to close it up, right? So the computer told me that's an inaccuracy. I should go ahead and move my bishop straight away here. And I am going for that square. I, I do go for that square, but I didn't want to give him any counterplay. I was a little bit nervous about going there. If I would have went there right away, maybe he would just sacrifice his rook for the pawn. And uh, yeah, so he just sacrificed the rook for the, the pawn and so forth. And I, 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 I wasn't too crazy about um, about this, even though it's, it's rated very good for me. I, j I just didn't want to give him that kind of counter play. I I, 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 I didn't want to give him back his pawn. If I give him back, yeah, I'll be up the exchange, and it looks pretty bad for him. I, I just didn't want to give him that yet. So I am gonna make that move, but there's a lot of things I have to w be worried about. Cause even if I were to make this move, what if he thrusts his pawn here? Right, he thrusts his pawn here. Um, I can't take because I'll be dropping this rook. And I didn't want to have to retreat my bishop back. In fact, they rate that as a blunder. So I didn't want to, have to do that. So I, I kind of just waited it out a little bit. I just, just made this little move here. to say, you know what? I want to see what you're going to do. I have plenty of move to make. I have, you know, uh, I have plenty of options I can do. You're the one that ran out of move. All right. And now he like, ooh. Now let me triple on that foul. And what I tell them is, nope. <laughs> now I close it up. And now the cool thing about closing up now is that he can't do the stupid stuff that I was afraid of now. Because if he were to try to um, trade, that would be pretty bad. You no, know, so he can trade like that, but it's it that wouldn't go too well with him. Uh, from there, I probably try to trade pieces with him. Just try to trade queens by moving over here, and this just force him to trade queens. That's an inaccuracy. I'm not really thinking too deep here, but I, I wasn't too nervous about this, and I also wasn't nervous about this move anymore because now I can actually take this, and then now he'd be giving me two pawns for free. And I'll be I'll be very happy in this situation. Now in this case they rated this one not the best move. Um there's actually a better move where I can double up, but I I'd rather just take the free pawn. Um even though there is a better move. That's what I would I would just take it, the the, the double pawn. So I'll take two pawns for free. And I can still close up the position later on anyway. Alright, so once you make that move I now move on to my next objective, right? Remember, my first objective was to close, was to make sure he has no um, entry points into my position. And then now, after I do that, my next objective was to close up that foul. So I cl I'm closing up the foul. So right now, he can't make any use of that foul. And he just moved his bishop back. And now he's going for a cheapo. So when you move over here, it looks like he's doing nothing, but he actually have a surprisingly crazy attack here. So let's say I don't notice what he's trying to do, and I just play a move like um I don't know. Let's say I just let's say I just play some move like this. What he could do here from here is he can try to sack his bishop. 
so he can sack his bishop. And then if I were to make the mistake and take it without noticing this threat. So he basically sack his bishop for two pawns. But now he's inside my position. Because now his, his rook has his open foul. This pawn is going to drop later on. This pawn is going to drop. It's going to be a disaster. Horrible, 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 horrible disaster. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to checkmate me um, from here. Um, yeah, it would just be very bad. And he basically went two more pawns. So he basically traded his bishop for four pawns. But technically he was already down a pawn. So he traded for three pawns. But um, yeah, it's going to be very hard to stop these pawns from being a queen. I'll probably have to sacrifice a piece for one of those pawns. So he's going to basically be up by, by quite a bit. All right, so I saw through that, and there's a number of ways I can I can protect against that. I could either move my queen here, or move it here. Both case scenario, I'm attacking his rook. So I say, hey, you know what? You want to play that game? Well, I'm gonna take your rook. All right, so I decided to keep my 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 queen on the back rank. So I, I did make this move. This is considered the best move. The alternating move was okay as well. And then he protects the rook. And I move my, key, my queen up a little bit. Just to get away from any kind of discover attack. And then he tried to, he protects the bishop. So therefore, he doesn't really have to worry about losing it. And then I, I trade off the bishop, the, the rook. Now, this move right here was, in my opinion, very bad very bad because once he made this move i didn't have to worry about him moving this bishop because now i can he literally gave me um my next objective which is to trade off the pieces right remember when you're playing close position rule number one is you want to make sure you still have your pawn breaks after you have your pawn, after you make sure you still reserve some pawn breaks, then you want to make sure any fouls that are still open up, you are controlling that foul. If you can't control those fouls directly, then you at least control its entry points, especially entry points into your 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 um your position or in your side of the board. And afterward, from there, um, the next objective is can be being in a position. In my case scenario, um. My my final objective was now to um once I control entry points, then I block up the foul. Then finally, after I finally block up the foul, now my next objective is to just trade out the pieces. And I saw this long, long time in advance, many, 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 many moves ago. I already made this plan, and I I, I stuck with it, and I, I kept on going. Now, to be honest with you, this is gonna be my downfall. Of you, sometimes you make a plan. And you're not flexible enough to realize that, you know, you may to need to change it. And you keep with the plan. My plan was still good. It was still rock solid. But I do miss an opportunity because I stuck with my plan. Now, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. All right. But this move right here literally told me, okay, now I can move on to my next objective. Because if he didn't make this move, let's say he were to just, you know, try to stick to this file right here. If I were to try my next point, which is try to change out, trade out the pieces, um, he can just take the rook. I take back with the queen, and then now he has this annoying move right over here. I guess it's not that bad because I can. No, it's pretty annoying. Yeah, be yeah. So he he do his move right here, and yeah, it's pretty bad for me. Yeah, very very bad. I'm not even sure I would try to protect it like this. I'll be down a piece. I guess maybe I gotta try to go for the attack. No. I just have to lose a pawn. Yeah, just just lose the the piece. Yeah, just have to lose the piece. It wouldn't be good for me. So that's what I was afraid of. So I saw through that. I realized I can't trade pieces yet. Because he has this annoying move here where um, if I were to take my, uh, he can basically pin my um, my bishop 
where he couldn't move, and I'll, I'll basically lose a piece. But as soon as he made this move right here, he literally closed out his option of doing that. All right, so I move on to my next objective, which is trade pieces. He trade, he trade. I don't have to worry about this move anymore. He can make this move, but then he just basically give me a pawn for free. And I saw that maybe he can go crazy and try to do this, but then I just move out of the way. And then if you go further, I just, you know, I just trade out the the piece right here. I just trade it. So now I won two more pawns for free. All right. All right, so now from here, he makes this move right here. So it looks like a quiet move. But remember, this guy, I should have told you, he offered me like maybe like two or three draws. He just kept on saying draw, draw. I keep on offering me draws. He thought the game was a draw, but no. I, I knew it was not going to be a draw. He gave me a pawn for free, thinking that, oh, you know what? I'm going to open you up. I'm going to open up your position, even if, they give me, even if I have to give you a free pawn. And you know what? I'm going to make you suffer for that. <laughs> if you give me a free pawn, you are going to suffer. You suffer big time. All right, so in this case, no, he play, he's trying to play for tricks. He played a quiet move. And if this was a fast-paced game, I might have fell for this. Because, you know, I would have kept on going my plan without noticing it. Here's what he's threatening. So let's say I don't do anything about it. Maybe I try to double up. Then he can do this crazy... Rook sack. And then if I were to take, he get in. And it's pretty much almost all over, over. Because he's going to take these pawns out. He can get this bishop in the game, threaten checkmates. It's it's, it's not going to end well for me. It's going to be very, 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 very bad. Um, even though he sacrificed a rook for a pawn. Um, he sacrificed a rook for, yeah, for two pawns. Um, and in reality, he's actually sacrificed a rook for um, for four pawns. And now when he sacrifice four pawns, he's going to have a very strong attack on me. Because right now, all the pawns he has remaining on dark square, he have a light square bishop. So he's controlling the dark square with his pawns. And then you have another, he'll have, yeah, so it it wouldn't end up well. He, I, I, he can probably checkmate me from here, maybe. I don't know, but maybe it just wouldn't be a good thing. So, right, so I noticed that. I noticed the trick. Sometimes you have to watch out for that, right? So, notice that a lot of time when you have positions that look kind of drawish, um, always keep on anticipating tricks your opponents can go for. Sometimes these players play for tricks. So, I saw through that. I didn't even give them that opportunity. So, I just calmly move my king up the board <laughs> now there was many ways I could have protected him here but by moving my king up the board here I'm basically telling you hey I see through your bullshit <laughs> I saw through your bullshit you, 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 you're you not going to get away with this so he had to move his rook back so I let him know I saw exactly what you're trying to do and then now I'm moving on to my main objective which is still to trade off the pieces now, I didn't want to move my rook on this file yet. I'm trying to get right now. I'm trying to get my rook on this file right here. I'm trying to control the file with my rook, but I don't want to move it in such a way where I give this bishop any free moves. So I'm I'm moving in slowly. I'm trying to get in there slowly. All right. So he just he pretty much giving up. I move my my king back. He's moving back and forth. So a lot of these moves look like I'm doing nothing, but I'm I am moving on my plan. I'm I'm trying to get my queen out of the board. So I'm gonna eventually move this pawn up, get my queen out of the board here. So I'm I'm just protecting this pawn a lot right now. Well not really moving. I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm just taking my sweet time to do it. Alright, so he attacked me here. I knew he was gonna attack me because he he ran out of moves. So I just move out of the way here. He move his rook here. And then I'm trying to get his bishop back on this square. So I, I give him something to attack later on. All right. So before I move move my rook up, I move my king back to that spot. Okay, remember, my main thing is I need to make sure he has no inchy square. And I can protect this inchy square from here. But I want to make sure that in the end game, when I trade out all the pieces, 
that his keen cannot, you know, come over here. If my if my rook, I mean, if my my keen is still stuck here, if he somehow get his keen over here, then he can support his bishop on this square, and he'll get a check, and then he'll get a scoop up this pawn. So to to prevent that. I make sure I at least control the square where his king can come in. I know this is a long way from here, but I'm already thinking about the end game. In my mind, all the pieces are already trade. I'm trying to prepare everything for that end game. So I'm trying to prepare for trying to limit any counterplay that he may possibly have. All right, so he moves here, just moving back and forth. And then I finally clearing up this way for my 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 um my queen. And he makes a strange move of moving his keen up. Okay, whatever. And then I finally infiltrate his position. So this is the first piece that actually leaves my home base. So all my pieces were always stuck. None of them be pieces past the fifth rank. So this is the first piece that ever passed the fifth rank so far. All right, so he moved his bishop over there. And then I do a, a silly move. And I'm just... I'm just moving my keen around. This I'm trying to what do you call it? I'm trying to probe him, right? So my main goal is I want to target this pawn. So I want to keep my eye on this pawn, and I just want to probe him to make weaknesses. I want him to to move his pieces around to make weaknesses. But I am going to trade off trade out the pieces. But I'm trying to probe him. I was trying to see if I can get his queen away from this particular square over here. But he didn't. He didn't fall for it. He just trying to play for draw. He's trying to play for draw by repetition. All right. So I move my 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 queen again. So I'm still eyeing this square right here. He moved back and forth, and then now I move my rook here. And the rook here is once again to provoke him. I'm provoking them to actually repeat the move. In his head, he thinks the game is a draw. Literally, you know, I, I literally have a big plan in, 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 in store for him. So I'm, I'm provoking him to keep on doing the same bullshit move uh, of moving the, his, his bishop back and forth. So therefore, he's like, ooh, I can attack your rook. <laughs> but I want to move my rook to this foul to begin with. So that was my part of the plan. That's right. He moves here. Now I... I I offer the trade here. Obviously, he's not going to want to take it because if he take it, his pawns are all gone. All right. I, my timing was perfect. I wanted this timing was very perfect because now I offer him a trade again. He kindly refused. He moved his, his bishop here. And I, I planned this. So all the move I did, all the BS move I did earlier, they were, they were wasting the tempo for this position. So I, I literally saw this move way in advance because now, bang, I stopped his bishop from moving. <laughs> <laughs> so he was probably like, oh, my God. what am, You know, he wants to make the same bullshit move he was doing before. But if he do that, if he would just move his bishop here, then he would just lose a rook. I'll just take it like here. My queen is supporting this rook. So it wouldn't end up well for him, right? So I'm literally forcing his hand to want to make the trade. <laughs> All right, so he threatened. So he, he's threatening to take my um, my rook, his rook. So he saw that and I finally trade off the queen. And then from here, I infiltrate. My rook is not infiltrating and I'm going to attack this pawn. So remember, I was eyeing that pawn for me. That was his big weakness he had. So he has to make sure he defend this pawn. So he moves there. And then I attack this bishop. And then he moves away. And this is where I made my... You can kind of say I made my mistake. Is I try to offer a trade here again. The best move, after I analyzed his computer, I would have saw this move. But it would have took me a while to saw this move. Um, later on in the position is what I should have done is I should have just advanced my my pawn. So to advance the pawn, basically threaten the queen it. Right now it's unstoppable. Once I get it up here, 
um, is is it can keep on going. It'd be it'd be very hard to stop. Like there'd be he'll basically have to actually trade off his his bishop for my pawn. So that's what I should have done. All right, but anyway, I didn't see that that move that move yet. So I threatened to take it here. So I actually threatened to make a trade, which is what part of my plan. Remember, I told you I have my plan. My plan is to trade off all the pieces. And he runs away like a little bitch, uh, which is okay. Because now I'm threatening your other pawn. <laughs> so that's the cool thing about the end game is that you just, you just keep on mounting the pressure. Just keep on mounting the pressure. Now, I predicted that he was going to move here. And then from here, I was going to move back. And then finally from here, I was going to move the pawn up. Right, because I didn't want to repeat the position. I want to move back. When I move back here, my main goal is to move back, move the pawn up, and I will basically cut off his entry square for his rook to protect the pawn here. But I can, but that will not only do that, but I'm also threatening to um, queen this pawn. So th there's many plans from here. All right, but he didn't do that. He just, for some reason, just, I don't know. He just, I guess the pressure was too much for him. He just gave me another free pawn. So I check him from here. And I believe from here he just resigned. He didn't even go further. He just resigned. Because right now he just lost another pawn. And once I force his king in the corner. Then I'm going to move on my plan of trying to advance this pawn. At the same time. He probably have to trade off this bishop. For that pawn. And I'm going to attack this pawn. I'm going to attack this position right here. And um, yeah, he, he he wouldn't be able to do anything. He won't be able to do anything. If he were to try to find a way to not trade the rooks, then I will make sure this bishop comes over here to protect this square and stop him from his rook from actually infiltrating my position. All right, so this is how you play a closed position um, so this is the best way of locking up the position and um, and playing for the win so a lot of times people lock up the position they accidentally make it a draw and I, I can admit I, I've been victim to that multiple games but um, this is the best strategy as far as how to make sure that even when you lock up the position you can still Keep playing for the for the win. Always play for the win, never draw.